Welcome to the tutorial creating templates of your character. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take all the work you've done so far for your cartoon rabbit, all its various poses with its drawing substitutions, its entire network, and how to use this to your advantage so that when you're animating you have several key poses and templates in your library ready at your disposal. So the first thing we need to do is go back into our network and then use the keyboard shortcut either command or control A to select all and then either command or control G to group. So the next thing we want to do is rename our group. So I'm going to rename this Karate Rabbit Master. And then if you notice our group, there is a port in, but there is no port out. So if you think about this and you want to drop this group as a template into a scene, how would you connect it to the scene without there being a, a multi-port out? So when, what we need to do is re-enter our group, and we do this by clicking on this gray arrow. And right after the composite, so beside the display, we need to add what's called a multi-port out. And we can get this by going into our module library. So if it's already not in view, you can always go to one of the view menus and select module library. And then from the all modules tab, um, all the modules are listed in alphabetical order. So if you scroll down to M, you should find multi-port out. And we're just going to hook that right beside. And as you've noticed, um, now our rabbit actually appears in the camera view, and that's because you're giving it an opportunity to become part of the scene again. So if we exit our group by um, clicking on the top um, link right there, you'll see that now there is, in fact, a port that also um, extends out of the Karate Master template. The next thing we need to do is add a keyframe for the first column of every view in the timeline. So the fastest way to do this is actually to collapse the master peg. And then on that cell, you can right click and either go to the menu item, insert keyframe, or use the keyboard shortcut Command F6 for Mac, or I believe Control F6 for Windows. And then if you uncollapse your peg, you'll see that there is now a keyframe in the first cell uh, for every layer. So we're going to do the same thing for the three-quarter profile view. and for the profile view. And then what I want to do is turn them into stop motion keyframes. So I can do this by selecting the keyframe and right clicking and selecting set stop motion keyframe or by using the keyboard shortcut command L. And then if we uncollapse the master peg one more time we'll see that we have exactly what we're looking for. So the next thing we want to fix is the Z nudging for our character's body parts. Um, and what that is, if we go to the front view, is that you'll notice there are some body parts that are slightly displaced, such as the Karate Rabbit's shoulder. It should really be behind this blue collar. Um, and in fact, our character doesn't have too many of these displacements. For the most part, everything is exactly where it should be. You know, um, I think in the three-quarter view, everything looks good. So I'm just going to use the example of the shoulder because I think it is the only one. Um, before I said that you should never do any of your drawing uh, setup with the transform tool because it'll make a keyframe and that's not permanent. Well, in the case of the Z nudging, we do want to place it on a keyframe and we will be using the transform tool. So what I'm going to do is select the arm and I'm going to use the... Um, keyboard shortcut B to go up the hierarchy until I've selected the full arm. And then I'm going to go into the timeline and scroll down until I find that arm, which is here. And then I'm going to uh, click on this plus sign here to uh, reveal the various transformations that you can make and then also open the data view by clicking on this arrow here so that I can see the values as I change them. So if you remember before we unlinked the XYZ position in a tutorial of um, I think a, a very long time ago and we did this precisely for this 
function so that we can push this arm back in space. And the way that we do that is that we do select it in the camera view. And in fact, the focus has to be on the camera view. Right now, this red focus is around the timeline view, so it will not work. So I have to click somewhere in the camera view. And then I can use the keyboard shortcut Alt up arrow or Alt down arrow. In this case, I want to move the shoulder back. So if you think about it through an aerial perspective, the up arrow is actually pushing backwards in space, so away from the front of your computer screen receding in space. And the down arrow actually goes towards the camera or more towards you from an aerial perspective. So I'm going to use Alt, up arrow, and then if you just noticed, the arm snapped backwards and it is now behind the collar as it should be, but now we have the tail to deal with. And then if you notice here in the data view, the position went from 0, 0.0 to negative 0, 0.001, um, letting you know. Another way to look at it, I'm not sure if it's too fine an adjustment, but if you actually open the top view, I know you can see it here, and then you zoom in, you'll notice right here if you click on this, this is actually the arm. And it's actually, you can see it physically from a top perspective that it has been uh, displaced from the rest of the body parts that are all completely at the zero, zero flat plane level. They all exist on the same level. So now what we have to do is actually nudge the tail back so it's also behind the arm. So I'm going to select that. And I'm just going to collapse this, and I just want to be sure I'm doing this right. So I'm going to search for it in the timeline. And once again, we're actually looking for the peg of the tail. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut B to go up one. And now I'm actually on the peg. I'm going to open up the Karate Rabbit tail peg. And if I scroll down, we can see that the Z position is at 0, 0.0. And I'm going to put the focus back on the camera and do exactly what I did before. I'm going to use Alt, Up Arrow to push it back. And as you can see, it's also moved here in the top view. So there it is. So now we're finally ready to make our template. So to do this, we have to go to the library, click on the Animate Pro Library, and select the menu item, Write to Modify. Then click on it again and select New Folder. Then click on the gray arrow to reveal the new folder, and then right-click on the new folder and select Rename Folder and then rename it Karate Rabbit. So now what we want to do is take this entire uh, group from the network view and copy and paste it into the right side of the library. So to do this we select the module, then use the keyboard shortcut Command C or Control C to copy, click in the library view and use Control or Command V to paste. Now we have the option to rename our template, and I'm going to rename it Karate Rabbit Master. Now what we want to do is create a kind of full master, but just for the front view, the three-quarter view, and the profile view. So to do this, we select the Karate Master template in the library, and once again, Command or Control C to copy it, and then Command or Control V to paste it. Then we have the option again of renaming it. So this time I'm going to rename it Karate Rabbit Full Front and say OK. Then what I'm going to do is right click on the Karate Rabbit Full Front template and select Edit Template.
So this new window that has just opened up is actually a scene of our Karate Rabbit full front template. So what I'm going to do here is delete all the keyframes and extended exposures except for the first column for the front view. So to do this, I'm going to collapse the master peg, then select uh, the cell after the first column all the way to cell 20 and hit delete. Then if I uncollapse my master peg, you can see nothing is left but what was there before in the first column. The next thing I'm going to do is actually take this red bar and drag it all the way across so it just reveals the first column. This way when we um, drag this template into a scene, you're not going to have a bunch of empty exposures um, that are suddenly inserted into your scene. And the last thing I'm going to do is rename my group to Karate Rabbit Full Front. I'm going to save these changes. And then I'm going to close the scene. So now my Karate Rabbit Full Front template has been edited. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing we're going to copy the master, but this time for the three-quarter and profile views. Okay, so we just want to save frame 9. So I'm going to delete everything in front and everything after. And then what I want to do is I want to drag this entire column to the first column. So now if I uncollapse my master peg, you'll see that the three-quarter front, um, all the keyframes and uh, exposures are still there. And I'm going to drag this red bar again so that there's only one column exposed. And I'm going to rename my group again. And then I'm going to save. and then close my scene. So now my Karate Rabbit 3 quarter has been edited and we're going to do it one last time. So now that we have all our full and master templates, it's time to make templates of the key poses. So to do this, we're actually going to go to the timeline instead of the network view. For these four templates, it was very important to take from the network view because the network is the fullest and the completest rigging of the rabbit that you can have in Animate Pro. Um, in the timeline, you might be missing some of those important connections and you risk losing them if you create full and master templates from the timeline. But in the case of key poses, you can take them from the timeline and it is actually the easier way to go. So to do this, we're going to collapse our master peg, click on the first keyframe, which is the first column of the front view, and then drag it into the right side of the library. Then once again, we have the option of renaming. I think I'm going to give the caps lock a rest and just name this front underscore KP for key pose. 
Then I'm going to do the same thing for the three-quarter view. as well as for the profile view. The last templates that we need to make are key post frames of the three views of the Karate Rabbit's head. So not the neck, but everything from the neck up the head, the facial features, and the Karate Rabbit's ears. So to do this, I'm going to open up the master peg, and I'm going to search for the head, which is right here, the head peg. And I'm going to collapse it. So once again, it's everything but the neck. So you can see the neck below it. And I'm going to go to the first keyframe in the front view and drag that into the right side of the library. Once again, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it front head and say OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the three-quarter view. And rename it three-quarter head. OK. And then for the profile view. and then say OK. So now that we have all of our templates, what we need to do is to test them. So we're going to do this by creating a new scene. And I'm going to call it template test and say create. So if we then go to the library of this new scene, we can drag one of the templates from the scene. So I'll drag the full front. And you can either drop it directly into the camera frame or into the left side of the timeline. And as you may have noticed, the Karate Rabbit full front group module appeared automatically in the network view and in fact connected itself automatically to the composite. You can in fact drag and drop any of the templates directly into the network view, but oddly enough, it will then not connect itself automatically to the composite. I believe this is because the software then believes that you know enough about the network view to connect this module yourself. So I generally prefer to drag and drop these templates either into the camera view or directly into the left side of the timeline. So next thing we need to do is extend this single frame exposure. So I'm going to click on the 40th frame, right click, and select the menu item, Extend Exposure. Then if you uncollapse this group, you'll see that in fact all the exposures have been extended to the 40th frame. So let's say that you are animating, there's a bunch of keyframes here, you've done a bunch of transformations, and then all of a sudden you get to about the 20th frame, and you decide you want your character to switch views. Well, what you can do is grab one of these templates from the library. So let's grab the three-quarter key pose, and then drag it, and then drop it at that exact frame in the right side of your timeline. And so as you see, you can go from the front directly to the left. Then as you're animating, you might decide that you'd like to keep this view but you'd like to change just the head of your character. Well you can also grab the head so let's use the profile head. But this time you'll notice you won't be able to drag and drop it onto the master peg. As I scroll downwards all of a sudden a green circle with a white plus sign appears and that's the only place where I can drop this template. So as you may have realized that's because this is actually where the Karate Rabbit head peg is situated. So what the templates are trying to do is find an area of identical structure. And that's the only way these templates actually work with this drag and drop concept. They have to be completely identical. If there's even one layer missing 
or one connection out of place, this will not work. And so it does a pretty decent job. Sometimes you need some minor adjustments made um, to make it look perfect, but it's definitely a lot faster than using the drawing substitution window to go through every single layer until you replace every single body part with the view that you're looking for. So templates are definitely the most efficient way to go. So that's it for the tutorial creating templates of your character. Um, and it's actually the final video in the Animate Pro rigging series. I hope that you enjoyed yourself throughout these videos and that you feel like you've learned a lot.